this is Charlotte with Living Inside Out Ministry. We started a new series a couple weeks ago, Rat Race or God's Pace. Which are you involved in? I've had to do some real, what we call soul searching, some self-examination. You know, we all need to do that. Because living with a knowledge of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ is not something that is automatic. I'll tell you what is automatic. The rat race out here. Oh, the rat race to go here, to get there, to do this, to buy this, to have this, to run here, to just run, 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 run. It is not automatic to live with a knowledge of the presence of the Almighty God inside of you. That's done on purpose. And that's done something, that's something that is done very consciously. We looked at one scripture, Psalm 46, 10 and 11, and I'm just going to go over some of these because what we want to, what we want to know here, what are you involved in? The rat race or God's pace? Because the answer to that will determine why don't I hear from God with more clarity? People ask me all the time, how do you know it's God talking to you? Well, our answers are in these lessons right here. Psalm 46, cease uh, 10 and 11, cease striving and know that I am God. You know, we try to make ourselves our own God. Oh, the world is doing that today. Just in case you don't know it, watch the news and watch everybody who wants their own way and they want to call what they've determined by their standard truth. We discussed equality in our previous uh, teaching. Listen, real equality? Right here, people. Right here. Not out there. Here. You can choose to live a sinful life, but you can't choose the consequences. Keep that in mind. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, the nations, the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. He's with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah means pause and think about that. Then we looked at another scripture, a group of scriptures, and we found out that trying to live without God prevents us from hearing direction for our life. And the reason we try to live without God is because we get caught up in the rat race. Then we looked at another set of scriptures in Luke 10. Martha and Mary, Jesus coming to their house for a meal. Martha's, okay, let's get a menu together. Um, let's clean the house. Let's hang these curtains. Let's, oh boy, come on. Let's fix this place up, this place out here. What are we going to have to eat? And here, Jesus is more concerned about abiding in this house and feeding me because he's the bread of life. Well, one sister got a hold of that truth and one didn't. Jesus commended Mary, but only a few things are necessary. Really, only one. I like the way Jesus talks. He's just right to the heart of the matter. For Mary has chosen the good part. Hmm. So there must be a bad part, which shall not be taken away from her. Now, Martha was preparing all kinds of outward things. The dishes, the table, the meal, the house. Mary thought, hmm, I need to prepare myself because this Jesus is coming to my house and I know who he is. And I want to gain revelation that I know only he can impart to me. So I think I'll ready myself. 
big difference between Martha and Mary. So we stopped at Matthew 25, 1 through 13. We stopped there because I didn't want to be interrupted in reading this set of scriptures. As I shared before, this particular set of scriptures has really, really been on my heart for about a year. I see so many Christians running, 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 just like the world. Running to this meeting, this meeting, this meeting, this meeting. They're so busy running to meetings, they don't know what happened at the meeting that they just left. People, that's not what being a Christian is all about. Being a Christian is being Christ-like, sitting at the master's feet. Are meetings bad? No. But you can't possibly go to all of them and still have time and take time to spend with Jesus Christ in his word alone. A prayer closet. We all need it. So Matthew 25. Now we looked at Psalm and Luke. A couple of reasons. How we get caught up in the rat race and then we don't hear with clarity from God. You might say, how did I get here? We're going over some of those things. We try to live without God. We try to make ourselves our God, or perhaps we have our job as our God, or perhaps we run into the gym and do an all kind. I mean, all the time. Listen, exercise is fine, but you can overdo it. If you're leaving God out, you need to put something aside because he's more important. Mary saw that and she was commended for it. Wrong priorities. Here's another one, and I see this um, all the time, all the time, and I have to catch myself as well. Matthew 25, 1 through 13 in the NIV. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. Now, this is not concerning taking these scriptures concerning like the rapture, the great. We're not talking about that right now, although we touched on the rapture. But there is a, I'm using this as an analogy. There's a lesson here that we can learn. Why don't I hear from God with clarity? Well, we're going over some of those reasons. Try to live without God, wrong priorities. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, we're going to meet the bridegroom one of these days. Five of them were foolish. I like the way Jesus talks. He just, right to the heart of the matter, five of them were foolish and five were wise. There's no sort of and kind of. Five were foolish, five were wise. The foolish ones, now here's how the foolish ones acted. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. Well, that's okay. Not going to get any light out of that. The wise ones, here's how the wise ones acted. However, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming. Gee, we don't know when the bridegroom is going to return for us. We're the bride. The church is the bride. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. That means they put the oil in them. They, tri they got the, uh, the wick that they light. The foolish ones said to the wise, remember how, what the foolish ones did, or didn't do, we should say. They brought their lamps, but they didn't take any oil with them. So they had their lamp ready as far as the wick, Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, now here we are, you might say game day. 
give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. Hmm. Here's the reply from the wise virgins. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way, oh, I tell you, if it wasn't for the last minute, some people wouldn't get anything done. But while they were on their way, they're on their way, we're going to run out of oil, game day. Oh, don't you know? Let's see, what is it called, Murphy's Law? But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. Oh, no, we're in a fix. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, others came also. Later, the door was shut. Later, others came also. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, here's a lesson. Here is a lesson. Hear me, people. Therefore, keep watch. Maintain your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Maintain your stand for what the Bible says is right. Maintain your standard of truth and righteousness according to the word of God. Not what the rat race tells us. Because you do not know the day or the hour. One of the other reasons, another reason that we do not hear with clarity from God is because of a lack of preparation. We tend to adopt the idea that the world has, the world without Christ has. Oh, I've got plenty of time. I'll do that later. I just need to run to the gym every night. I just need to go camping. I like camping. I just need to go over here to this meeting. I've got plenty of time. Jesus, using this, teaching this, called those people, those women, those people, foolish. Foolish. The ones who made preparation and maintained their relationship with Jesus Christ, with the bridegroom. They were the ones, when it came time, they had their lamp, they had their oil, they had enough wick in it, they had enough light. Light. So they were able to hear when they were supposed to go. They were able to hear even far in advance of that how to prepare for that coming time. You might think that you're wasting your time when you pray, but that is not true. Prayer in faith in God's word are powerful words filled with life that are sent out into the atmosphere to do what God commands them to do. You're praying for someone to be born again. You're interceding perhaps for a family member, a co-worker. You're not wasting your time. And what you're also doing for yourself is staying in tune with God through his spirit, his living spirit, his Holy Spirit. We don't know the exact hour 
that the Lord will return for his bride. But we can have a perception down in here, inside of ourselves, of how near the time is. And I believe the time is very near. The Lord could return to the clouds and rapture his church any, right now. Are you ready? Are you ready? Would you hear him? Would you see it? Would you know enough right now to prepare yourself? Would you know enough to, to stop trying to live without God and going your own direction? Just stop. Lay it aside. Do you know enough? Are you being led right now? Is the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now? Your priorities are out of whack. That's why you're not hearing from me. That's why you're finding yourself in these messes and then you're saying, oh, I wish I, why didn't I, oh, why didn't I know that? And then sometimes we get mad at God. Why didn't you show me? He's always, always talking to us to protect us. You know, being a Christian is not a bunch of legalism where I, I can't drink alcohol. Yes, I can. I can drink all I want. I just don't want to. I want my judgment clear. I want my mind free and filled with the thoughts that God has. Not craziness and not poor judgment. I want to hear with clarity from my father as he directs me every day of my life. As he directs me maybe during the night through dreams and visions. I want to hear him with clarity, and I want to be able to understand him. I don't want foggy vision, and that's what drugs and alcohol do to you. Foggy. They fog your vision. Some people, some people think that when you have a couple glasses of wine, that you can think more clearly. Oh, we talked like we've never talked before. Do you know, friend, you could do that without that alcohol. That's a choice. That's a choice. You can choose to be candid with someone, with your spouse. You can choose to be candid and open and vulnerable. Or you can think that, oh, I need a couple glasses of wine and then I kind of loosen up. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A little more loose than you should be. Lack of preparation. I see that all the time. Are you prepared? Are you prepared right now? If the Lord would return for the rapture, he's coming to the clouds. First the dead in Christ shall rise. Are you prepared? Are you born again? Do you even know what that means? According to the Bible. Let's get out of this letting Hollywood movies determine and uh, define what born again is, what the rapture is going to be like, what it's going to be like. They're trying to understand, let's see, without knowing God. And isn't that one of the reasons why we don't hear from God with clarity? Cease striving. You know, it's tough to live without God. I used to do it. That is hard, people. That's hard. If you're not born again, find out. Get this little book, Charlotte, at livinginsideoutministry.com and know what Jesus meant. Do you know Jesus was talking to a teacher of the Jews, a teacher of Israel, and used the term born again. And here was this scholar, and he didn't know what he was talking about. That's what inspired me to use this particular image. That's what inspired me to use that image, because that's what Nicodemus saw. How can a man go back into his mother's womb? That's kind of what happened with Mary, uh, Martha, I'm sorry. Martha was thinking about the natural things, fix the meal, clean the house, get the 
good dishes out. Mary, on the other hand, was thinking about eternal things, spiritual things, things that last. And the ten virgins, five of them prepared themselves. They were prepared. Five of them, and they were called wise. Jesus called them wise. Five of them made no preparation. They had the attitude, well, I'll do that later. I've got time for that. Oh, we'll pray later. I'll prepare myself later. And then, whoops, here comes the bridegroom. Uh-oh, we don't have enough oil in our lamps. So I think I'll go ask those who have prepared. Can I borrow some of your oil? And interestingly enough, I find it very interesting. They said, no, no. There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. Hmm. So they're out hunting down supplies. Are you at the last minute? minute hunting in the word I need some light on this I'm in a mess oh Whew. and it's not too late it's not too late you find yourself in a mess but repent that means stop the direction you're going the way you're thinking your manner of life stop you need to stop. God's not going to make you stop. He's not going to hit you in the head and knock you out and say, oh, there, there you go. Now you can't do that anymore. See, he doesn't do that. He lets us make our own decision as to whether or not we want to prepare ourselves, whether or not we want to get out of the rat race and move over into God's place or pace. See, he lets us make that decision. So what are you involved in? How prepared are you every day to hear the voice of the great shepherd so you can know what direction to go for that day? Maybe it's just a, a perception down in your spirit. But you leave that day for your job after having spent some time with the Lord. And you know that something's going on that day. So you're prepared. You're prepared. You're not asking somebody else all the time. Sometimes that's what going to church meetings and conventions and conferences is all about. You know, many times we're going to all of those because we're, I just want God to speak to me. And yet he could speak to you and would love to speak with you in your home, alone a time that you have set aside for you and him. You don't have to go running all over all the time to find God. Was he in the wind? No. Was he in the fire? No. He was quiet in the still, small voice. He spoke. He's not always the loudest voice but he can be the voice that you hear if you spend time with him. Cease from trying to live without his counsel. Get your priorities straight. God first. First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. His righteousness. That's, that means his way of doing things his way of thinking, and all these things that in the rat race you're seeking will be added to you. Friends, I have found that to be such a true scripture in my life and my husband's life. We have not had to run, run, run. We have not ever had to send out letters every month. We've not had to make phone calls and beg people to send money. We've never had to do any of that. 
I want God's best in my life, and I want it for you as well. But we all have to do some self-examination. Am I up? Have I gotten myself caught up in the rat race or God's pace? Did I slip over here into the rat race? We've got to keep our priorities straight. God first. And we've got to prepare ourselves. The ten virgins, they, five of them, were completely prepared. And they were referred to as wise. Five of them were not. And they were referred to as foolish. How does that happen? We get caught up in the rat race instead of submitting to God's pace. So then we don't hear with clarity the direction that God has for us day by day. Born again, what does that mean? Are you born again? If you don't know what that means, order this book, Charlotte at Living Inside Out Ministry. Dot com, and we'll get it out to you right away. Inside this book is Jesus really talking to Nicodemus, somebody who was a very religious person, a teacher of Israel. And Jesus was astonished that he did not know what he was talking about. Nicodemus didn't know, yet he was teaching the Jews. He was teaching Israel. Now I wonder what he was teaching them. The law. Jesus fulfilled the law. Now does that mean we run around here and do whatever we want? You know, when you have Jesus Christ as your focus, you'll want to please him. You'll want to. Get born again. Get this book. Get a clear understanding in your heart and get it settled in your mind what Jesus means. Born again. You must be born again. Do you want to go in the rapture? Get born again. You must be born again. We're going to close for now, but we're going to pick this up because we want to know, how is it that I find myself in messes and it's at that time that I realize I'm lacking? But what am I lacking? How do I shift gears? Why is it I don't hear with clarity? from God. Is it God withholding information from me? Or is it me who's allowed myself to get caught up in the rat race and I've laid aside God's pace? This is Charlotte with Living Inside Out Ministry.